Brian Jones poked a tousled head out the door of his new Chelsea Muse home and welcomed a soaked Melody Maker reporter in from the rain for his blind date session last week. Brian had just awakened and he stumbled blearily around the lounge attempting to deal with jackets and boots scattered over the furniture. He quickly procured reviving cups of tea, and as the records played, Brian guessed not only most of the artists but the arrangers and labels. This is great for getting up in the morning, Brian said while trying to warm his toes in front of a fan heater inadvertently switched to cold. This brings back memories of California. It sounds like the Beach Boys but it could be the trade winds. It's probably the Beach Boys, it sounds like a Brian Wilson production. They usually sing better than this. Actually, it's terrible. I'm sorry because Brian Wilson is a pretty good producer. I get around was beautiful but this is corny. I'm not doing an Andrew Oldham and saying everybody in the world is a bad producer except Phil Spector, but that is pretty shocking, especially for someone so big in America. I wouldn't have been surprised if that was a British group trying to get a surf sound. This is The Temptations. Lovely. I love them. They always have a nice guitar with them. A friend of mine saw them on television the other night and he said they were very good visually. I don't think there's going to be a big Tamla Motown thing. Let's face it, Marvin Gaye came over here, but he never had a hit record, which is a great shame because he's really one of my favorite artists. It's surprising he's not here on the tour. The Temptations could make it though. This is beautiful and the arrangement is too much. It's a funny thing that when artists make records at Motown, everybody starts to sound the same after a while. When they're new, they're great. But then they tend to sound samey. Sometimes we'll sigh. I know the voices. Are they well known? Oh, Peter and Gordon. I was talking to them last night. It's a very funny scene because they're practically forgotten over here and they're so big in America and Australia. Me and Paul McCartney played on some of their album tracks, just for a laugh. It's pretty soulless, but it's nice. I think they're good singers but it's a very wet sort of music. All the Buddy Holly fans are going to be wringing their hands in anguish. Actually there's quite a dramatic feeling to this. Who did the arrangement? Jeff Love probably. It'll be a big hit in America and Australia but not as big as I go to pieces. I've got a funny feeling it might take off over here. Why do people release singles like this? The single market is a pop market and people who want to buy quality music, for lack of a better word, will buy it on albums. This stuff has to be packaged with sleeve notes and a nice picture of a girl on the cover. People who will buy this are not used to singles, which are very unattractive things to buy. I don't see the point really. If they can put this out on an EP it might sell more. I don't know who it is, I'm so out of touch with the jazz scene. The singer sounds as if he's trying to catch up with the rest. I think actually it's the record player, but I'm having difficulty picking up the words. This could have been great, but it should have been slower. Chords are nice and there are some good sequences, but the production could have been better. I bet the writer did not intend the tune to be played so fast. I'm so lonesome, I could Johnny Cash and Johnny Tillotson have done this. I know that voice. Could it be Frankie Ifield? It's a beautiful song. I have this by Johnny Cash and it has a steel guitar on it. Oh, he's singing it all wrong, not like a country song. It's such a good song though, that it's going to be a hit. The first I've heard today that will definitely hit. All the mums and dads will love this. You know all those people who queue up outside the Palladium to see Cliff. He's really scored there, but I don't think the kids will buy it. They'll be too busy buying all the new Kinks and Beatles. Yeah, that's nice. Shell Talmy has really started something with this stop chords business. This is British. Oh, there's a Nori Paramore harmonica player. I bet he's the same one as on the Frankie Ifield record. I don't know who this is. Have they had a hit before? Quite pleasant but an album track, again. The beginning implied something big was coming, but it just went nowhere. It's an amalgamation of The Bachelors, The Cliff Adams Singers, Nori Paramore harmonica player, one of The Kinks guitarists, Jimmy Leach on organ, and produced by the BBC. Is this Frankie Ford? I was talking about this with Andrew Oldham the other night. It sounds so dated though. Classics of the rock and roll era. 
not much to say about this one. I don't think it will be a hit.